Hello. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Jeremy Carty. I'm an educator here at the Copernic Observatory. Um, and if you haven't checked out the first part of our tour, I recommend watching that first video uh, before this one. Um, that will give you a tour of our of this building with all of our classrooms. Um, this is going to be the observatory tour. We're starting in the main lobby once again because we have one other telescope in here that I want to show you. Before we do that, though, I do want to point out our Astronaut Hall of Fame. And uh, we always like to show this before the observatory to tour, before you go and explore space. Um, and we have a few local astronauts I want to mention. Uh, up here is Eileen Collins from Elmira. We have uh, Dan Birch from Vestal, Douglas Wheelock from Windsor. And the missing picture here is Douglas Hurley, who we have in the other room uh, because we were celebrating the Crew Dragon uh, launch. Um, which was successful, yay. Um, now, here's a, 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 when he was younger, this is a, a picture of him. Uh, and he was aboard that uh, Crew Dragon capsule. So we're very happy that that was a, success, a successful mission. Uh, there's one other uh, astronaut I want to mention, and that's Jeanette Epps. Um, she is from Syracuse. Um, and uh, she is... Uh, one of the astronauts that might end up going to the moon as part of the Artemis program. Uh, so be on the lookout uh, for her. So, uh, and this is a nice image of the space shuttle. This is a really cool uh, view there. Now, uh, I want to point out this other telescope that we have. Uh, this is the Copernic Blue Telescope from a company called New Moon Telescopes. You can see it's huge. It reaches almost to the ceiling. If we rotate it around here, I want to show you the eyepiece section because um, this is a what we call a 14 inch reflector and reflector telescopes use mirrors. Uh, so there's a big 14 inch diameter mirror at the base of this. And uh, it's uh, I'll show you similar telescopes in just a moment um, to this one. But what I really want to talk about is the where the eyepiece is. Um, because as you can see, as we move it up and down, the eyepiece stays at the same height. And that's really important because that means we can use this as an accessibility telescope. Um, so if someone has to remain in a seated position, um, they can comfortably view through this eyepiece without having to adjust their height. Um, so we're really happy about this scope. It shows great views of the sky um, and it's uh, already done uh, really well um, when we've used it for previous public programs. So uh, check this out the next time you're up here. Um, we'll have it outside on the blue pavement. Speaking of which, why don't we head out there right now um, and see what's going on? Okay, here we are outside now, uh, and we're gonna uh, take a look at our field area because I did uh, mention in the previous video, I wanted to talk about the science part. So uh, the science park, the playground, is going to go right over here where you're seeing right next to the gazebo there. Um, the blue pavement, this is a nice bouncy rubberized blue pavement. Um, and this is already down. Uh, we also have our nature path that wraps all the way around down near the pond there, around the solar panel towards the gazebo. Um, so you'll be able to walk around that and get some really nice natural views. Um, we have some wildlife up here that I'm sure you can hear. Maybe the frogs uh, riveting over in our pond or the birds. We have lots of deer up here for sure. Um, but right now we're getting ready to observe the night sky. It's getting nice and dark. Well, not quite dark yet, but we're getting there. Um, dark enough uh, to uh, see the moon really clearly. Nice and bright up in the sky there. Maybe you can just about see it. Um, it's a nice, uh, just over a half moon. So uh, we might uh, observe the moon tonight or maybe some uh, galaxies that are out there. Um, at this point in the uh, last day of May, there's not many planets unless you're willing to stay up until mm, about around midnight. Um, so you have to wait a bit. But uh, we do have some telescopes here that we're, we can use to observe the moon, for instance. This is an 8-inch Dobsonian. The Dobsonian refers to the way 
uh, it swivels on its base back and forth, and it moves up and down in altitude. The telescope itself is what we call a reflector, and all a reflector is, uh, is it's a scope with a mirror. Uh, in this case, an eight-inch diameter mirror at the base of the telescope. And if I pop the uh, dust cap off, maybe you can just about see that mirror if I move it up and down uh, at the bottom there. So that mirror is slightly curved to collect uh, light, um, and it collects it to a focal point. Just before you reach that focal point, there's a secondary mirror at the top in that crosshair structure, and that reflects it into the eyepiece area right here. And that eyepiece you can use to, uh, to magnify the light. So you can change the eyepiece out to adjust how zoomed in you are on that object. So that is the eight inch Dobsonian. On the other side, there is a smaller Dobsonian, a six inch. So this is the six inch Dobsonian. And these are great portable telescopes. We bring out a few of these during our observing programs. Um, and we get a really nice view of the sky with those. Uh, and you can just point and shoot basically at what you want to look at. Um, so if you want to look along the Milky Way, you will see tons of stars. These are great little scopes and they're actually pretty white, lightweight despite their uh, size. So uh, at this point though, I think we should really go in and see the big telescopes in our observatory. And you can see at least two of the domes here. This is our 20 inch dome over here. And this is our 14 inch dome. Next to the 14, which may be out of sight there is the six inch dome. And that's where the first telescope we'll visit, but we'll regroup in the uh, lobby the telescope lobby first, um, so you can see how it's organized. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start heading in. Follow me right this way. All right, here we are in the uh, telescope lobby, the observatory lobby, um, and there's entr entrances to three domes here, the six inch, the 14 inch, and the 20 inch. Before we check, go check those out, uh, I wanna point out few of the items in the room. Uh, this corner is where we store our Dobsonians and we saw the eight inch and six inch outside. We have a couple of other, here's another six inch, here's another eight inch, eight inch back here. And this is a 10 inch Dobsonian um, and these just keep increasing in size. You know, you can get the 20 inch Dobsonian. Uh, and uh, again, those are pretty lightweight scopes. Um, with this one, you know, you might want two people carrying it out, but eight inch and six inch, it's pretty manageable with one person. Those, again, are Newtonian reflectors. Uh, that's an, a mirror uh, design for a scope. Uh, we also have refractors, and uh, that's the first telescope we're gonna go visit is the six inch refractor. Um, so that uses a lens just like a magnifying glass would, right? Um, now on this table, before we go check that scope out, we have a few astro scans. Um, these are really nice little telescopes. Um, they even have their own uh, strap to carry them around your shoulder. Uh, we have these fancy doodads right here uh, that are eyepieces attached to a plastic funnel. You have some shower curtain on top and a rubber band around that. And with this, this is called a sun funnel, we can project an image of the sun. If you remember from the previous video with the heliostat, that was a projection telescope, we can do a similar thing here with this. Um, again, if you have a scope at home, it isn't, I wouldn't recommend trying this um, just because you wanna make sure you're using the right length of funnel. Uh, you gotta take a lot of things into account, um, better safe than sorry. But when you come up to Copernic, we'll make it safe to observe the sun without damaging your eye. Um, but any other object, again, in the night sky is fine. Just the sun, uh, very dangerous to observe. So uh, that's the sun funnel. These are mostly solar telescopes nowadays, but they can be used to look at the moon or some uh, brighter objects in the sky. Really handy scopes and they just uh, swivel, they're spherical at the bottom, so they just swivel along that base. Really neat. Okay. Um, so. Uh, I think we should go check out our first uh, telescope. So follow me into the six inch dome, right this way.
Welcome into the six inch refractor dome. Uh, this was part of old Copernic, this dome at least, not necessarily the telescope. Uh, that's the same case for the 14 inch dome. These are the two original domes of the 1973 Copernic. Uh, so this is a six inch planetary refractor. Um, I say planetary because it's designed for observing planets and the moon. Um, closer and brighter solar system objects, it's phenomenal at. Um, and you can really push the magnification and get a really crisp view of these objects. So uh, it's a really long telescope, right? Very, uh, sort of a different shape from the Dobsonians out there. And again, that has to do with the optics. A refractor uses a lens, like a magnifying glass or what's in my glasses right now. A reflector uses a mirror. So there's the curved mirror on the ref reflector. This one has a uh, curved lens. Now uh, at the bottom of the telescope down here, there's an eyepiece section. And like the Dobsonians uh, we saw earlier, you can switch eyepieces out to change the magnification. That's the same with just about any telescope. And you can see some of our eyepieces right behind you there. Uh, we have a bunch of options for this one. So we can either have wide views of the sky, um, if we want to look at a really big star cluster, or we can have narrow views and really zoom in on an object like uh, Saturn, for instance. You can push the magnification and see a nice crisp view of those rings. Um, this telescope also has a solar fil filter called the Herschel wedge, and uh, that removes uh, 90 percent plus of the uh, harmful sunlight so you can observe it directly with your eye this isn't projection um, like we like the heliostat or the astro scans down there uh, this is a direct view of the sun but you remove a lot of light think about it similarly to those solar glasses you might have used for the eclipse um, but you wouldn't want to put one of those in front of a telescope and hope it lets you observe safely. Um, that's not recommended at all. Uh, this is a, a really sophisticated filter designed to remove that light. So uh, we use this as a solar telescope. You can uh, come up here and, and view uh, the sun through this safely without going blind. Um, you can use it for the moon, for the planets. It's good for some deep sky objects as well. Uh, I do want to mention uh, while this telescope does not have a computer necessarily, uh, it does have a tracking mount. This is called an equatorial mount up here. And that means it's uh, with a, a specialized motor designed to keep up with the rate of rotation of the Earth. We can track those objects in the sky. So once we find the moon, for instance, we don't have to worry about it the rest of the night uh, because the telescope will keep its eye on it the whole time. So it's uh, really handy because uh, otherwise, like the Dobsonians, those don't track. So you have to keep up with it because the sky is going to appear to move as the night goes on. But really, it's us that's moving, right? Um, we have the rotation of the Earth causing that uh, day and night cycle. So uh, you may ask yourself, uh, what are these red lights you're seeing all around the observatory? Uh, these red lights are designed to protect your night vision. Um, it can take up to an hour or more to adapt your eyes to the night sky. Um, and both for safety reasons and for uh, ob observing, uh, it helps to maintain that night vision throughout uh, your observing session. Um, that way you can continue to see your way uh, throughout uh, the evening um, and also still see those really bright or dim objects in the sky. Um, so the better your night vision gets, the more you can see, both through a telescope and just by looking up. So uh, that's the 6-inch refractor. Uh, I want to take you into the 14-inch reflector next. So let's head that way again to the second uh, dome. Okay, here we are in the 14-inch uh, dome and telescope. Uh, this is a 14 inch reflector, uh, a Celestron Edge uh, reflector telescope. 
and it's 14 inches across at the bottom. That's the size of the mirror. Uh, it's a little bit of a different design uh, to the Dobsonian. Uh, you can see the eyepieces at the bottom rather than on the side. Those Dobsonians are Newtonian telescopes. This is a sh what's called a Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, so it's, it's just a different arrangement of those mirrors. And uh, this scope is great for dim objects like those outside of our solar system. It's no slouch with the planets either. Can really zoom in on those, get some uh, crystal clear views. Uh, great for the moon. Uh, and we still use this telescope for direct observing. and That'll uh, be important a bit later. So uh, the scope itself is based on an equatorial. You can see that here, just like the six inch. Uh, that means it can track objects. Uh, but the main difference there is that it's a computer system as well. And that means you can also find objects. Uh, so it's called a go-to telescope because it goes to the object for you. Um, all you have to do is tell it where you want to go. So if we want to go to the moon, for instance, I'm going to prepare that. I'm going to go into solar system and select the moon. And if I hit enter here, I don't have to move the telescope myself. It moves right along for me. So it's going to flip around so it can get a good image of the moon. So this is what we call slewing. When a telescope slews, it's moving to its next object. All right, looks like it's pinpointed the moon there. And uh, we can uh, look through the eyepiece uh, to see it up close. Uh, and again, the eyepieces you can change out to adjust the magnification. Um, and it ends up being a really great system just to jump to a bunch of objects throughout the night. Or you could stay on one object um, and take some pictures of it or just directly observe it if it's something uh, you want to see uh, throughout uh, a few hours. So. Uh, this is a tracking telescope. It's a go-to telescope, uh, and it's a reflector. Again, meaning it uses a mirror. Uh, so I think now uh, we'll regroup down in the lobby for a brief moment, um, and then we'll head into the largest dome in the largest telescope. Let's go see what that one looks like. All right, follow me. Okay, so we just came out of the 14 inch and we're heading towards the 20 inch. Uh, we'll visit that in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to show you this little uh, intersection area where all our domes converge uh, because uh, we have an extra room here. This in here is the ham radio station. This is utilized by the Binghamton Amateur Radio Association. Um, so if you're interested in getting involved with ham radio, uh, or being an operator, uh, you can uh, give them a quick search and learn how uh, to operate ham radios. Um, the reason I bring it up, though, is because uh, one of our summer camps uh, that we try to run every other year, um, or every year if we're lucky, uh, is the International Space Station. Uh, so I think it's called Welcome Aboard the International Space Station. and uh, that program is designed to allow you to communicate with the astronauts aboard the ISS. And we do that using this station right here. Um, we work with NASA to uh, communicate with them and set up that event um, because they're very busy. So you have to set aside uh, some time for, for the astronauts. Um, and then you match it up with a flyover of the ISS in our area. And as long as it's in, within sight, you can talk to the astronauts. Um, so that's summer camp coming up, uh, should be in August. So uh, go ahead and check out our website if you want to learn more uh, about that camp. All right, so let's head into the 20 inch scope now and we'll talk about our final scope for the evening right this way. All right.
Well, we are finally at the last telescope on our tour, and we're going to show you the flagship of Copernic. So uh, this is our largest dome. It was built in uh, 93 as part of our first expansion. And uh, this is the 20 inch reflector. Uh, it's similar in design to the 14 inch, slightly different optical design. Uh, but again, you have the eyepiece area at the bottom and uh, you have a 20 inch primary mirror right here. Uh, it's 20 inches across. There's a secondary mirror up top, just like those Dobsonians in the 14. Um, and the idea to talk about how light moves through a telescope again, you have it coming through the tube, bouncing off that bottom mirror. That mirror is curved, so it bounces it into a cone-like shape. And towards the point of that cone, that's where the secondary mirror lives. And it's facing down, so otherwise all the light goes shooting back off into space, right? So you want to re collect that, send it back down into the eyepiece area. Now, uh, we don't directly look through this telescope anymore. Uh, it's a large enough scope that we can get some really, really nice images out of it. So we have this specialized astrophotography camera at the base here. There's actually three layers to this system. There is the CCD camera. This is this, that big boxy thing at the bottom. You have a filter wheel and a focuser. So you don't need to adjust these mechanical optics on the scope at all. Uh, it's all handled through this system and operated on the computers over here. So we have a uh, special software uh, that runs uh, the scope. It's not a uh, run off that little paddle like we saw on the 14. It's uh, operated through wind, uh, Windows system and Windows software. So uh, you can control the camera system and the telescope. That's what all these monitors are for. Um, so it is on a tracking out just like the 14 and the six uh, and it is a go-to telescope. So you just gotta tell it where to go and what to track and it will uh, do that for uh, the entire evening, it'll stay on one object as long as it's above the horizon. So this telescope and also the 14 are sort of like robots. They're robotic telescopes um, that are almost fully automated. Now the only non-automated part of this dome as well as the others is the dome itself. So that we do operate off a manual switch mechanism. And I do wanna show you the dome and how the dome works. So what we have over here is the window into the sky. Now it's closed right now, uh, but, and it's dark out, so it's not really gonna be much use to see uh, just the, the dark sky out there. Um, but this is the window. It opens up completely. This is a latch mechanism. At the top, there's a garage door mechanism that just slides that upper portion right up onto the other side of the dome. So uh, we have that narrow window into the sky. It's just a bit bigger than the aperture of the telescope, how wide the scope is. Uh, so if we want to be able to see the entire sky, I bet you can guess what we need to do. Um, we need to rotate it, right? So I can show you that. Let's see the dome rotate around. Here we go. <laughs> Now, when you're here in person, I can tell you it's almost like uh, that we're moving on the ground here, that we're rotating, uh, but it is just the upper portion of the dome. It does sort of feel like a ride, though. Let's go the other way. Now, all domes operate like this, all three of our domes. They rotate on a similar mechanism. I'll stop it there. So uh, that's the dome operation. Uh, we can just rotate the dome to see a different object in the sky. Not automated though, we do operate it off that switch. Uh, last thing I'll point out are just some examples of the photos we saw. In the previous video, we looked at some of them in the computer lab. 
Uh, but we have some more here like galaxy images and this will look way better um, at home. Uh, but perhaps we'll put together a, a 360 uh, gallery of our astro images. Um, for those with virtual reality, I'm sure that'll look amazing. Um, so if you're interested in that, let us know in the comments. Um, that'll really inform us on what you'd like to see in the future. Uh, we also have, again, that picture of the aurora, the northern lights here. Some comets, nebulae, and, and the moon. Okay, and with that, that does wrap up our virtual tour video. Um, now, if there's something you, that you didn't get to see or we didn't focus on, um, but you saw the, along the way as you panned around and looked around our buildings, uh, definitely let us know in the comments section and perhaps we can fill you in on those details. Um, so uh, we are continuing these virtual programs uh, for now. Uh, we do uh, hope we get to see you in person soon, but we are going to continue to run. Uh, we have our uh, public programs on Friday nights. Um, you can check out when those happen on uh, Facebook. Uh, we'll post updates on those and on our website too, uh, copernic.org. Uh, so we'll, we'll have live streams of those. We also have our virtual summer camp programs uh, and uh, like the International Space Station camp we have coming up. Uh, in August, uh, but there's a whole list there. Check those out. Um, some really neat things that uh, will work with you uh, on those camps at home, uh, virtually. Uh, there's actually a virtual reality camp as well uh, that we're uh, pretty eager to see how that goes. And maybe uh, you're watching this video as part of that camp right now. So hello. Um, now, uh, if you're in a position to support us through donations, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, any, any little bit helps um, keep Copernic going um, for the foreseeable future. So uh, you'll find those links on Facebook and at, in, if you're watching this on YouTube in the video description. Uh, and uh, thank you again for, for watching and supporting us. Uh, we look forward uh, to these virtual programs and also uh, to seeing you uh, soon. So thanks again, and we'll see you later.